Hello and welcome to the January Sew Along. This is the first of many fun and exciting designs we have in store for you in 2021. To start off the year, we are making this cute shadow shapes quilt. In this video, we will be showing you the stitch out of the blocks and the construction of the quilt. The design comes with six different blocks, but they all follow the same steps. We also recommend you refer to the more detailed photographed instructions we provide while completing this quilt. As always, this design is open to your own creativity. The one we have made is just an example of how it can look. Before we get started, I hope everyone had a nice time over the Christmas and New Year period. Just like always, start off by hooping up your hoop with the suggested stabilizer. Then go ahead and stitch the batting down. Once stitched down, trim back all the excess batting right up to the stitching. Now place fabric A evenly over the batting, right sides up, and stitch down. Remembering to guide the fabric, so you get a neat finish with no creases. Start stitching the quilting pattern. Moving on to the applique pieces now. Stitch the placement line for the shadow. Fabric B now goes over the placement line and stitch down. Using your applique scissors, trim the fabric 1 to 2 millimeters from the stitching. Embroider the satin stitch. Repeat the exact same process of fabric C. You have now completed the stitch out of the block. Take your work out of the hoop and trim back the seams to half an inch. Repeat the same process for the rest of the blocks. Once you have all your blocks made, lay them out on your work surface in the layout of your choosing. To begin the joining process, grab your first two blocks and place them right sides together, matching up the border stitching. Pin into place. Take the pin blocks over to your sewing machine and stitch just inside the border already stitched on the blocks, so the stitching will not be seen on the right sides later. Use the same technique to join the final block onto the row. Once sewn, iron open the seam on the back of the blocks. Also give the front of the blocks a good press too. Continue this pinning and stitching process until you have joined all the blocks into horizontal rows. Place the first two rows right sides together and pin the points along that long edge. Using your sewing machine, stitch the two rows together. Matching up your seams as you go. Remembering to stitch in between the lines on the back of the blocks. Repeat this same pinning and stitching process until you have joined all the rows together. Use your iron to press the seams on the back of the blocks open. Give the front of the blocks a good press too. Trim back your edges so they are nice and even. Awesome work everyone, looking great. Moving on to the borders. First, measure one side edge of the hanger, then go ahead and cut two strips of fabric to this length. Then proceed to cut two strips of batting to match. Now we're going to attach the batting to the border fabric using spray adhesive. Please refer to the instructions for the alternate option. Place the quilt on top of the border fabric right sides together. Match one of the side edges of the quilt with one of the long edges of the border fabric. Pin or clip together. Using your sewing machine, stitch the two together with a half inch seam. Trim back the batting in the seam you just created. Repeat the same pinning and stitching process for the opposite side border. 
Press both borders over flat. Take your hanger back over to your work surface and trim back any excess border fabric and batting from the sides, making the borders flush with the end of the hanger. Now repeat the same process to attach the two end borders. But this time remember when you measure the ends you'll need to include the extra width from the side borders to the measurement. Using your iron, fold the borders open and give a good press. Top stitch to finish off the borders. If needed, trim all your borders so they are even. To add a backing to your quilt, start by placing the quilt front right side up on top of the wrong side of the backing fabric. You can use spray adhesive or safety pins to secure the two together. Move over to your sewing machine and stitch in the ditch. Once the quilt front and backing fabric have been correctly joined together, go ahead and trim the backing fabric so it's the exact same size and shape as the quilt. We will now be adding binding around the edges of our quilt to finish it off. To work out the fabric requirements for this step, measure the length and width of the quilt and add them together and then multiply by two. Cut a long strip of fabric this length. If you are cutting one piece of fabric this length, add about an extra 10 inches to the length just to be sure you have enough fabric in the end. If you don't have a piece of fabric long enough, you will have to join strips together. To join the strips together, lay the ends of your fabric strips right sides together as shown and sew a diagonal seam from corner to corner, a 45 degree angle. Trim the corner and iron open the seam. Repeat until the binding strips are sewn together into one long strip. Once you have your long strip of fabric that is needed for the binding, fold the whole strip in half lengthways and wrong sides together. Give it a good press with the iron. Open out one end of the binding strip and fold over that end on a 45 degree angle, then give it a good press with the iron. With your rotary cutter, trim about a quarter inch away from the fold. Then fold that end of the strip in half again. You have now created a little pocket for the end of the binding to be hidden in later. To attach the binding to your quilt, pick a side and match up the raw edge of the binding with the raw edge of the quilt. We will be starting at the end of the binding that has a little pocket fold in it. Using a ruler, measure one inch down from the end of the binding strip and mark that one inch with a pin. Then measure 2 inches down from the 1 inch mark and pin again. Finally, measure 2 inches up from the first 1 inch mark and mark that 2 inches with a third pin. Using a quarter inch seam, stitch 1 inch of the open fold onto the quilt and stop stitching when you get to the 1 inch mark. Then leave a 2 inch gap. This will provide an opening to insert the end of the binding fabric when we have completed the sewing. Then start stitching again at the 2 inch mark. Continue sewing until you reach the first corner and stop stitching 1 cm or 3 8 from the end but keep your needle down. Lift your foot and turn your quilt. With your needle still down, continue stitching to the corner. Lift the binding strip over and pull against the angled stitch that we just made to form a diagonal fold. Then fold the binding strip back down creating a fold at the top. Pin and start stitching again until you reach the side of the quilt that you started on, mitering the corners as you go. Mm -hmm. 
Stop stitching when you get to the pin that marks the two inches from the starting point. Fold up the binding so it sits just above the first two inch mark. Trim the excess binding at this point. Place the end of the binding fabric into the pocket created at the start of the binding process. Pin in place. Continue to stitch the seam until binding is completely sewn on. Now that the binding is half attached to the quilt, fold the binding over and give every edge a good press. Turn the quilt over so the wrong side of the quilt is facing up. Starting at the corners, fold one edge of the corner onto the back of the quilt. Iron and pin into place. Then repeat for the second side. This should leave you with a nice pointed mitered corner. Use this same technique for the remaining three corners and then continue pinning the binding to the side of the quilt. Using a sewing machine, top stitch the binding to the quilt. When you reach the first corner, simply leave your needle down, rotate the quilt and continue stitching. We suggest matching the top thread colour to the colour of the binding. If you have pinned the binding on the back correctly, when you stitch in the ditch on the front, the stitching should catch the binding fabric on the back. To ensure you catch the underside of the binding, use your nail to feel for the binding strip. And voila, our project is finished. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this month's sew along. Remember to share all your fantastic projects this month on our socials. And see you next time. One more thing quickly. Go check out our Sweet Pea Essentials range on SWPEA.com for all your sewing and embroidery needs.